What's up everyone, how are you doing? And welcome back to another video. I've got something really amazing to show you guys. Now to change it up a little bit, instead of reacting to personal portfolios like we did throughout this personal portfolio series, today I'm going to react to some code snippets and little code projects that people have done on CodePen. I want to show you guys how much flexibility there is with web dev, how incredible it can be, how creative you can be, and the amount of possibilities uh, you can achieve with learning web dev and the things that you can do on the web. Now, of course, this video is purely to inspire you guys, uh, to motivate you guys and to show you guys what amazing things you can do when you become a web developer and how amazing you guys can be when you work hard and strive to achieve your goals. Now, without any further ado, I don't wanna keep you guys waiting. I've got some amazing projects to show you guys. So let's jump right into it and let's see how amazing it's going to be. Okay, so the first project is a 3D CSS plane. Now, when I saw this project first, it just wowed me because there is just so much CSS in this. Now, of course, I can control the plane with my mouse, but I don't know if you guys remember from my very viral video where I reacted to personal portfolios, uh, where we looked at Bruno Simon's website and we looked at the little car that he did that you could drive around on the web. Now, of course, this is very similar when it comes to the style and how it was created. Uh, where you can actually fly the plane and it does all these like little cool animations of rotations all the clouds are moving by the engine of the plane and the fan is spinning and of course if you actually click on this it changes everything to night so you can fly during the night or you can fly during the day now how is this made obviously as we can see here someone used a html pag now pag is a templating language for html uh, which basically or technically allows you to code faster code html faster i've personally never used it a lot of the things i'm going to show you today i've personally never used or never seen but you know this is also here to inspire me so uh, obviously a ton of uh, html pag templating language a lots of CSS, but I mean a ton of CSS to make the plane look nice, uh, to make everything look nice. And also, of course, here they use GSAP. Now, GSAP is a really powerful and really awesome animating library for JavaScript. Now, if you guys want any GSAP tutorials, I'm super happy to teach you guys some GSAP. It's super fun, and we'll see a lot of projects today that use GSAP. Uh, so if you do want me to teach you guys how to use that, make sure you smash the thumbs up button so I know if you guys are interested. I imagine someone is going to make a website one day where you fly a plane around in your portfolio. You could do that. Uh, you could uh, be as creative as you wanna be. Okay, now let's move on to the second one. This project I found really interesting because it makes use of an unordered list, which is basically a keyboard on the screen. The color scheme is nice. And obviously you have this one button that's kind of shifting around and moving. So there's a little bit of animation implemented into here. And it just makes use of an unordered list and list items to render this keyboard and for you to be able to actually interact with it. So if I press B, it like toggles the, the keyboard letter and then it shows you another one, M. And I guess this was written to practice how good your typing is and how quickly you can do it. Now, of course, on top of this, if I wrote a keyboard like that, I would definitely put a timer on it. I'd definitely improve it somehow so you can actually test how fast your typing is or how fast you can press the letters or, you know, implement this uh, speed typing challenge into it. Just the fact that this is an unordered list made of list items is just super cool. And then this whole, uh, you know, animation toggle thing is also awesome. Uh, there is a quite a bit of CSS here to make the colors look nice and pretty. There's a little of animation here with keyframes of how the things are moving. And then of course we have a nice bit of JavaScript where it just, you know, shows us the whole array of all the items that we're going to print and some, you know, random, you know, timestamp functions and and some key press functions to recognize what key we have actually pressed, etc. This is super cool. Uh, eyes on the screen, hands on the keyboard, and off we go. I'm really bad at typing because I only use two fingers. I don't know if you guys know that, but I type with two fingers, uh, but I can do it very fast. This was a really interesting project, something that you guys could technically recreate and even make better. And uh, yeah, let's jump onto the third one. Now this one, I really like. And I like because it's actually quite clever in the way they do it. This only uses one div. One div which renders a placeholder for this QR of life to be there. Now, of course, it uses a little bit of CSS, not too much. And basically all of this is based in a canvas. Now, what we can see on the screen here is this matrix showing all the values true to be painted blue. So little squares to be painted blue and all the false values to be just black. 
But the really cool thing here is if I just scroll down for this whole matrix, so this 2D array of values, of Boolean values, and it's super long to create this whole thing, where we actually see functionality of something happening. Now, what happens? Well, actually, if you click the screen, oh my God, it just, it just does a lot of random movement. And then every time you click, it just pauses in that place. And every time you click again, it just reverts back to this whole movement thing. Now, I think this is really awesome. I think the way it was created is really awesome. I haven't dived too deep into this JavaScript, but it's definitely something I'm going to look into because I think it's done in a really interesting way. So I, I'd recommend you guys to check it out. Of course, all the links to all these amazing code pens will be in the description. Now, the fourth code pen I wanna show you today is also quite interesting because it's very simple, but it uses GSAP. So this really cool animation library where you can do a lot of cool things. Obviously in our HTML, we have a bunch of SVGs and paths uh, to kind of draw all these imagery that we're going to see here. Uh, and we also have a bunch of JavaScript. It's not a huge amount, it's a little bit, and obviously a tiny bit of CSS. But the end result is super fantastic, and I think it's really fun to work on those little details on your web page because that's what makes it stand out. Now, of course, if I click send, as we imagined, yes, it's going to move and it's going to say that it's sent. Now, this little animation, I think is really, really cool. I think it's really nice the way how the plane kind of swifts and the like little uh, path of the aeroplane follows behind it. Whew. Really nice. Simple, nice, but the amount of creativity this kind of adds to your website is super cool. So I would really recommend you guys looking at GSUP and trying to learn it because animating a web page and giving it that nice taste of animation is just super cool. The next code pen I want to show you is really cool. Why is this so satisfying to watch? Well, why is it so satisfying to watch? Well, it's because it's morphing. The text is morphing. Now, I actually know about this technique and it's really cool. If you guys want a tutorial on it, just let me know and I'll be happy to do one. But basically what it is, is uh, you're varying uh, blurriness and you're varying uh, the transitions between different divs in this case, and basically adding this transition, adding this blur effect on top of uh, the divs being stuck together actually gives you this morphing transition. This doesn't require a lot of code to be implemented, uh, just a little bit of JavaScript, but you can actually make it work with any type of text and give this this really cool effect, which actually behind the scenes is quite simple to understand. So uh, really, really cool little snippet of how morphing works. And you can just look at it here in this um, code base if you wanna try and learn it and try and understand how it works. But uh, really cool to show and I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now, this is another code pen that I found really interesting. Technically, it has no HTML, but here it just deals with uh, the HTML tag, the body tag, and a canvas. The way this is animated and the way it's done is really, really fun. See, this is also giving you guys an idea of how nice and how creative and how flexible you can be uh, when doing things with JavaScript and rendering things on the web. Now, obviously, I would have never imagined that this is even possible to do. It's kind of almost like an illusion where the squares seem like they're on top of each other, but actually they're below each other or they're next to each other. How do we understand this? Is this a 3D space? Is this not a 3D space? Uh, but it's just super cool. And the way they change colors, the way the colors kind of blend. Here you can really look at some JavaScript code that's super interesting, quite complicated uh, maybe to understand at first. But if you kind of run through the things, this is how I used to learn. Uh, I used to look at all these little snippets and just try and understand how people have done all these things and then obviously the more you look into this the more you understand how things work i just think this is another amazing example of the possibilities and capabilities that web dev can actually give you the last code pen i wanted to show you today which i personally think is quite funny and it's a little nice hint you can add to your website uh, this is called the impossible checkbox this is written in react quite a little bit of css a lot of JavaScript to get all the concepts here, but you'll understand why. Here, the whole idea of this is that this checkbox is impossible. Now, if I click on the checkbox, or if I just hover over it, we have a little burr popping up. Now, if I click the checkbox, the burr puts it back. If I click the checkbox again, the burr puts it back. Now, if I keep clicking the checkbox, the burr will keep persisting. But if you keep doing it, look, he pops up more. 
he pops up more again and he's getting maybe a little bit frustrated. If I click it again, he's still very persistent. If I click it again, oh, now he's angry. <laughs> if I click it again, now he's making a noise and he's shouting at me and whatever he said now there, uh, we probably don't want to translate. <laughs> but uh, I just think it's super funny. And of course, the most important thing is that this also uses GSAP. This also uses the JavaScript animation library, which is super handy when you want to create things like this. When you want to build your CSS, when you understand your CSS and you want to give that CSS life, you want to make it uh, move, you want to make it do something on your website. So yes, this is basically all the really fun code pens I want to show you guys today. I hope they inspired you guys. That was the main purpose of this video, to give you guys inspiration, to show you the possibilities of web dev and to just introduce you to maybe new concepts that you might want to learn. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you want to see more reactions of me looking at amazing code pens, looking at amazing personal portfolios, looking at amazing websites, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Uh, but for now, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.